Now before I show you how you can create a text style, first of all we know what text is, that's what we've got typed within our document here. Second of all, what's a style? A style is nothing more than a collection of formats that you choose either from the font group, paragraph group, or other groups on the ribbon that you save within a style that when you go ahead and you select some text you can apply that style or collection of formats in a single click. Pretty cool, huh? Because the alternatives are, well, you know, selecting your text and then coming up here and choosing your uh, formats, B for bold, I for italics, and then coming down here, selecting some more text and trying to remember what you applied to the uh, previous text. And then after you figured it out, you know, clicking on all those buttons again, I mean, that's repetitive. Instead, just go ahead and save it as a style. And when you save it as a style, up here on the Home tab in the Styles group, you can save it here with the other built-in styles. Click on the More button. There you go. you got some built-in styles there. So that way you can just go ahead and click on it. It applies to the text. Come down here, select some other text, click on it. It applies to the text there. I was going to say the other way you could do it is using the Format Painter, but the problem you run into using the Format Painter is that if you have some style up here and you're like, okay, I want to copy that style. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you want to watch my formatting uh, training videos and I go over the Format Painter. But in any case, you want to copy the format applied to that text down to, let's say, page 20. Well, you have to come up here to select it, and if you're on page 20, why scroll all the way up to the top or to page 2 or 3 and trying to find the format that you want to go ahead and copy when it's going to be right up here. With all the other styles, you can just go ahead and click on. You don't have to scroll up and down or search throughout your document to find the uh, text that you have the format that you want to copy. Just go ahead and save it as a style there in that list, which, by the way, let me go ahead and click the More button. So we've got a bunch of styles here, right? And I hover over this one. You can see that whatever I have selected there in my document, which is the word other, it gives me a preview of the style. Now, when I look at the style, I'm like, hmm, I wonder what formats are being applied to it. Let's see, it's a light blue. Are there any paragraph formats or uh, what's the font? All you have to do is go ahead and right click here on the style in the list and go to modify. It opens up the window and then down below, it's got a list it all right here. It's got the font, which is Cambria, you can see the font Cambria, size 13, there's size 13, B for bold, the font color, there's the font color, and then it's got for paragraph settings, it's got 10 points before it. So the other way you can do this is to click on the format and then go to paragraph and well there it is, 10 points before it, but let me click cancel. I like reading it all right here instead of clicking on format and going into each group to see whether it's checked or not. I mean if it's listed right here then I don't have to go all over the place into each group. Okay, let me go ahead and click Cancel. And then also in the Styles group, you have the Change Styles option, which you can go ahead and whatever style you have currently applied, you can change it with the style set. You can go to Colors. If you're working on colors, create new theme colors, which is when it comes to working with themes, which is another training video. But nonetheless, it's there when you want to change it. And then also you've got the fonts. If you apply to font theme, you can change it here. Then you have paragraph spacing. You can hover over it. You can see how it applies or gives me a preview in my document when I go down to open. In any case, let me go ahead and click off. Come back over here to the expandable dialog box because I want to show you how you can create your own style and add it to the list here. Click on its expandable dialog box button. You have the common styles here and then wherever my cursor is at within the document. You can see over here in the Styles task pane that the current style applied to it is body. You can go ahead and right click on it to find out um, what type of uh, default the body is. In any case, I'll leave that alone. Let's go down to the bottom. We have the three buttons. We have New Style, we have Style Inspector, and we have Manage Styles. So when I want to create a new style, there it is. Style Inspector is about checking out your styles you can skip. After you create your new styles, you can go ahead and manage it, make updates to it, change it, under the Manage Styles window. Let's go ahead and create our new style first. Click on it, opens it up, and it says, okay, what's the name of your style? It's got to be spiffy. Then what type of style do we want? Well, you've got quite a bit to choose from. You have Paragraph, Character, Linked, Table, and List. I'll cover Table and List later on in two separate training videos. And then Character and Paragraph, well, basically the difference between the two, I mean the steps when it comes to setting them up is the same. But the difference between the two is that the character, when you select some text, you apply a style to the selection. Where as far as the paragraph goes, just go ahead and click in any paragraph. And when you apply the style, it applies to the entire paragraph. So either applying the style to the entire paragraph or just character by character. I'm going to do character. So what you see me do here, just take that same concept if you want to go ahead and create a paragraph type style. Okay. And then down below, what type of uh, font would you like? Do you want the default times or click on the drop down arrow, type in 
some other type in some other type of uh, font. Let's see, comic. After I type in comic, I like that because it brings up Sans MS. Just hit the tab key and it'll select it. You can see it down the preview window what it looks like. And then what size do you want? We can go ahead and do 14. We can make it bold. What color? Click on the drop down arrow. Maybe do something blue. That looks good. Now, this is one way you can do it. If you want to get a little bit more particular than what you see here, then click on the format button, go up to font, and it gives you more options, more choices. I mean, you still get the same basics, you know, the color, and we can choose red instead. And then you get these special effects, which you don't see right here. You know, you can do small caps, all caps, you can do superscript, subscript, strike through, where it puts a line through it. I'm not going to do that. Let's see, underline style, we can do it uh, two lines, and you can see the preview window right there. Looks good. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. It gives me the preview right there. Looks good. Now, before I go ahead and click Okie dokie, notice down below it says, by default, we're going to add this to the quick style list. That's the gallery right here that has the, well, built-in styles. It will add yours there as well, unless you don't want to, then you can remove it. And if you remove it, where else can you find it? Well, I'll show you in just a second. And then it says, do you want it in this document only, this style, or do you want it in all new documents as well? Let's go ahead and say all new documents, click okie dokie, and there we go. Now, it's currently being applied to what I had uh, selected here, other. And you can see over here that it's, uh, well, when I have my cursor there, it's showing me in the styles task pane, that's what I have. And when I hover over it, it gives me all the formats that are being applied to it, that's cool. And like I said, if I didn't check it, to have it up here to be listed in the uh, gallery, well then, let me close out of here, I would have to click on the expandable dialog box button to be able to, you know, choose it here, which is fine. So all I have to do is come over here and select some text, and then come up here or come within the uh, Styles task pane and click on Spiffy and it applies it. So that makes it nice. I don't have to go ahead and see, was it double underline? Let me bring up the font group. Let me go ahead and click on bold. Just go ahead and create it once and you've got the style. Go ahead and use that style over and over again just in a single click. Really nice. And then if I need to make some changes, you can do it one of a couple of ways. You can either, you know, bring up the uh, Styles task pane by expanding the uh, dialog box here. Coming down here, and it's the uh, last button, Manage Styles. Click on it, and you've got the uh, spiffy there selected. You can go ahead and click on Modify, you know, make all your changes, whatever you want to do. Click Cancel, click Cancel. Of course, the other way is to go ahead and right-click on it. You can modify it. Brings it up make your changes. Let me click cancel. The other thing that you can do, it's kind of cool, let me close out, is you can go ahead and select whatever the style is being currently applied to and make some additional changes. Like let's go ahead and do italics and let's change the color to, I don't know, something kind of, well, a little bit darker there. And then what I can do is I can go ahead with that selection, let's come back up here to the styles group, right click on the style and say that I want to update to match the selection. So I'm going to update Spiffy to match whatever I have selected. So if I do that, it automatically updates everything else that that style is being applied to. So that's pretty cool. If all of a sudden I don't like what I see here, and I'm like, oh, do I have to go back and select everything again to reapply and click? No, just go ahead and select the text that you like, and then right-click to update the selection here, and boom, it updates everything within your document to match the new style. Let's see, a few more things. Oh, we went ahead and we said we want it available in any new document that we create. Come up here, click on the File tab, go down to New, and let's double click on Blank Document. And there it is, Spiffy. Let me go ahead and close out, back to my original. If I go ahead and right click on it, does it give me the option to go ahead and delete it? No. I can remove it from the Quick Style Gallery. When I remove it, it's not there, but when I click on its expandable dialog box button, it's down here in the task pane. I can go ahead and right click on it there and delete it. So if I go ahead and delete it, say yes, it removes all the formatting that that style contained from the text that I had selected. Let me click off, and uh, looks like it removed most of it here. It didn't clean it out completely because when I select it, it's got the change applied to it. It's got the uh, Helvetica applied to it. Let me click off and choose something else as opposed to times. So if you run into issues like that, I think my document has an issue because it's such an old document that I kept upgrading from previous versions of Word that it has a bunch of different styles from previous versions and so even though it cleared it out it must be sticking on to something that it just didn't like. In any case you know how to go ahead and change that. Select it and change it and type in Times and you'll notice that it has Times New Roman when I hit enter. That's Times New Roman when I click over here as Times. So like I said I've got old formatting. This is an old document where I don't have the font Times but it has Times New Roman but it looks the same doesn't it? In any case 
if your document is recent and you don't have something like mine that's from way back when with different fonts that were available back then that I used, you shouldn't run into this problem. But in any case, if you do, well, it's an easy fix. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.